Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. We're back with another disc die. We have this Trespass and we're gonna make kind of a ball golf uh, stencil die on it with some black die and uh, should turn out really sweet. Uh, and this is just a misprint. You can tell it does have a little bit of an actual true misprint on it and uh, double stamped as well. And so we're just gonna spend some time going through all the tools and supplies then jumping right into the project. So let's go ahead and do that. You're gonna want some kind of a disc. Uh, I would prefer a white one if you're gonna do a design like this. So then you go ahead and it, cut it out on a Cricut. Uh, you'll, this is an Oracle 6150. Um, you're gonna want transfer paper, comes in a big long roll. I fold it in half twice, I then uh, draw a big circle around it with the disc, with a Sharpie. This is kind of an optional thing. I made this on a 3D printer. It just helps you get lined up a little bit better. Um, and so you can have one of those if you want. You can find it on Thingsverse. Um, we're gonna use acetone. Acetone will help remove the stamp. Wear gloves when using acetone. Don dish soap and water helps clean up the dish. The disc, that's easy for me to say, uh, butane torch. And so it's got a little packet in there. You use half of the packet and put it in a water only, no acetone needed. Um, and then we have a pan, just a used pan. I actually haven't cleaned it out since the last time I used it because I had black with it. And then we have a electric burner. Um, and this is what it comes in. Uh, I got it on Amazon for relatively cheap. Uh, works really well. You don't even have to turn it up very high. Um, I use a heat gun, only put it on setting number one. Sometimes you'll want a ruler, uh, a funnel for your black dye. You're going to need a pick and a scraper tool for sure. Um, you'll probably want a Sharpie as well. Sometimes you have errors and you got to have some kind of like an X-Acto knife to cut. A pair of scissors also help. We'll probably actually use that when we're pulling some of this up. And so that's all the tools and the supplies. Let's go ahead and set up our station. So we are ready to rock and roll. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put some gloves on, pour in the dye, and then we'll start weeding. And you're going to want to put quite a bit of dye in there because it does need to float on this one because it will get the edges as well. I'm just going to dump the whole thing in. It was just about half full. Uh, then you can go ahead and start putting that on. I put it on about two, two and a half. Uh, then we'll go ahead and start the weeding process. This weeding should go very fast. This is a white one. Uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, sometimes I have clear vinyls. This is one of the white ones. So you will see a, should see, unless they changed it up since the last time I did it, blue underneath when I begin to do this. So you're just picking up, yep, it is a blue one. So it is truly a white vinyl. You are just going and picking everything you want to be black. I always put the design next to me. For some reason, in my design, there's a little chunk that probably shouldn't be there. I don't know if I was trying to do something special and that happened, um, but I like that right there. Another thing, I don't always do this. I am gonna just go ahead and cut this because the last couple of projects I've had, I've needed some extra vinyl. And so this will allow me to have a little bit of extra just on hand. And that is gonna be really close to uh, smoking over there. So continue to keep an eye on it, especially if you're doing this in real time with me. This is optional what I'm doing here, but uh, I always seem to need just a little chunk for different things. And sometimes when you're doing multiple colors, you can line them up on top of each other. Oh, I just threw the acetone container off the top of it. So we'll go ahead, pull that off, and we're going to line it up the very best that we can. I'm liking that right there. So I'm just going to set that back on there for one second because I probably should have done this earlier. 
and I don't even know if I said you need paper towels. You're going to need a ton of paper towels for this project. If I forgot to say that, I apologize. I normally have some laying out and remember to say it. I have it just right off the side of my table here. So fold it in half a couple of times, grab some acetone and just begin working off that stamp. Acetone does a pretty good job of eating through just about everything uh, when it comes to it. Uh, not always 100% perfect, but it does a really good job. And you're gonna have to do it a couple of times because it was a double stamp. A lot of the double stamps I mean there's a lot more stamp, obviously, uh, but there's like kind of the dye that you saw in the stamp and you do want to make sure you get that off. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. It is just starting to smoke just a little bit out of the corner of my eye. So now it's time to line her up. I kind of do like even some of like the original look to, uh, the, the double stamps, some of them look really, really neat. I'm going to start on this side just because there's more to grab onto. Maybe. I'm gonna spend a few more seconds really pushing it in. Sometimes it needs a little persuasion at first too. So just go slow when you're doing this. There is a lot of design parts on this. And you wanna make sure all those little pieces actually go down. Sometimes if you go at a different angle, you have some success too. And this transfer paper has been used numerous times and sometimes when it's been used a lot, it, it loses some of its stickiness. But it looks like me just pressing down where the pieces are is working decently well. So I'll probably soon, well, that one just came back up and that was one of the first ones. So sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. This is not my preferred way of doing this, but I don't think this transfer papers, this might be the last time I use it unless I have just a really basic stencil the next time. Cause I have used it a good fair amount of times. I think this is going to turn out really cool looking, especially on a white disc. So go ahead and pull your disc. This is off center. I know a little bit but I need to be able to look and uh, kind of get a good view on it just to help align it up nice and good. I'm liking that right there.
So we'll go ahead and spend just a few seconds getting some of the bigger air bubbles out. But we're going to spend a whole lot of time working on air bubbles here in a few seconds. And getting this to do exactly kind of what we want it to do. Now this will be pretty sticky that, and so it should come up a lot better than the last one if you actually press the items down on it. And so as you're peeling this, it should come off pretty good. Just notice that little one did not come off well. and remove it off of here. Sometimes having a little bit of pressure helps. Okay, I'm liking how that's looking. Go ahead and if you want to save this, you can. Uh, this might have been my last time. I haven't decided yet. Kind of depends what my next project is. Go ahead and grab some of those paper towels because we'll need those in a minute. And then I like to go ahead, put it on number one and go ahead and heat it up. So now we're gonna spend some quality time pressing this thing in. A lot of times I go ahead and just take off my glove because my hands are going to be pretty warm at this point. Um, I am going to just peel this one up and redo this one. Oh, don't do it like that. That was even worse than it was the first time. Now I wouldn't do that for a lot of them, but that one was just a little piece. So the main thing you're trying to do, I don't care about air bubbles in the middle. I only care about air bubbles next to uh, the edges. So a lot of times I will not care if there is an air bubble that's kind of in the middle of my design. That does not bother me at all. It's only those on the edge. So I will spend intentional time working out air bubbles everywhere and making sure you got a really nice clean edge like right here. And sometimes it's helpful to push it away from the edge too. Um, I know that sounds kind of strange, but uh, sometimes you can get away with just pushing it away from the edge instead of to the edge. And heat actually really does help. I hadn't used it for a long time. And one day I just decided I had a heat gun over in the corner and I was gonna try it. And uh, I've been very pleased with how well it works. Um, I've not really ruined any disc. And so you just put it on number one. And it just does a really good job of helping everything seal properly. And I just feel like ever since I've started to do it, my designs have actually gotten better. So that is one problem piece right there. I'm going to tell you that right now. And right here, that's, I think the only places I'm going to have issues on this whole design. Once you've done these enough, you can kind of guesstimate where the problem pieces are going to lie. I hope they don't turn out bad, um, but there's not a lot you can do except try to get the air bubbles out, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. The other thing I would caution you on is pushing too hard. Um, you actually can, can mess it up pretty good by putting too much pressure on it. 
and so if you're putting too much pressure you definitely can ruin your your potential beautiful disc die so don't don't ruin it by doing that And there's a lot of places air bubbles can get in. So as you're going around, look at every little spot. Because I thought I got all these up here and I just looked and almost every one of them had an air bubble in it. So, you know, take your time. This can take 10 minutes or longer sometimes just getting air bubbles out. But your product will look so much better. Your dye job, I'm serious. I'm going to put heat on one more time. So once you feel like you're all done, go ahead and give it one last look over. I know that sounds silly, but it's better to find that one last air bubble. So there's a potential of three places. I see one, two, three that may not come out perfect, but uh, it's gonna be good enough. So when I set this down, before I put it in, I'm actually gonna use my blowtorch and pop any air bubbles on top. And there's something in there and I'm not certain what it is. So I'm going to get a little Q-tip. And just kind of push it up on the edge. That way it doesn't affect my die. Go ahead and grab your disc. We're going to be putting it at an angle as we do it. Uh, then be careful not to touch the edges as well. And it's just going to float in there. Just like so. Okay, so it has almost been 10 minutes now. It's about 30 seconds away. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it though. Oh, hand slipped on the disc. That's why you do it out on your garage or someplace that doesn't matter near as much as a kitchen table. So yeah, it does look like where I thought it might mess up. We'll have to see. I think it did mess it up though but that's okay. That happens a lot when you're doing disc dies. It is not a perfect science. So we'll go ahead and uh, make sure the rim is pretty clean too. It's hard to go back and get it as clean as when you just first pull it out, so. Go ahead and move that off of the way. And we'll just start picking. And we'll just clean up the disc one last time. And I do like to take this into my sink and uh, clean it off. But I think that turned out really, really neat. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do have any comments, put them down in the comment section below. Hope you have a great day.